Good evening, everybody. So we're going we're gonna to begin the meeting. Um, and the first order of business is the uh, presentation of the colors. And so I would ask the Williston Boy Scout Troop 692 to present the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask the scouts to please post the colors. Thank you very much. So the first item on the agenda is uh, to recognize those who had passed away who are in the in memoriam section of the town report. It's on page one. Um, so in memoriam, Nelson Lefebvre, Donald Boss, Martha Burroughs, and Linda, I'm sorry, and L Leonard Mercia. Um, if we could remember their uh, dedication and uh, work for the town. Next, uh, the dedication of the town report, the annual report dedication. Uh, this year's annual report is dedicated to, by the Williston Select Board to Jeff Fears in appreciation for his many years of service to the community as an elected and appointed official. Jeff Fears served as a member of the Williston Select Board from 1998 to 2023. Throughout his remarkable quarter century tenure, Jeff was a thoughtful steward of the public good. He demonstrated a profound level of care and compassion for the community, the town staff, and the representatives, and the re residents he represented. Serving on a select board is a role of dedication and genuine appreciation for a community. It comes with its peaks and valleys and a fair share of difficult decisions and positions to take. Jeff consistently provided a pragmatic and analytical voice for the select board during hundreds of public policy decisions that he made and was engaged in over the course of his service. He served the community well and epitomized professionalism in public service in Williston. Jeff, if you could stand up. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next, if I could introduce the members of the select board, uh, Terry McCaig, the, the far uh, right, um, Mike Isham, seated next to him, Jean Jensen, um, Greta D'Agostino is the vice chair. She's absent today because of illness and didn't uh, want to risk infecting all of us. So uh, anyway, uh, we appreciate her uh, uh, dedication in, in her absence. My name is Ted Kenny. I'm the chair of the select board. And uh, this is pretty much almost the conclusion of my official role in town meeting. Um, so the next thing I would do is uh, call for a motion to elect a town moderator. Uh, Mr. McCullough. Mr. Chair, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to nominate Is there a second? Mr. McGuire. Are there any other nominations? 
Hearing no other nominations, all those in favor of Mr. McCaig as moderator say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. So I'll turn it over to Terry McCaig. Thank you. Stairs are terrible. <clears throat> So welcome to town meeting 2024. It's, been, it's my privilege to uh, serve as your moderator tonight. The official warning you'll find on page 13 of the uh, annual report. And the town manager town meeting is going to be dealing with articles one through four, although we've already taken care of item number one. And they're first on the agenda. And after uh, adjournment, there will be a presentation of articles five, six, and seven, which are the, the budget and the two uh, bond issues with opportunities for questions and comments. And that will be followed by a presentation of the Williston School District budget, or the you know, Champlain, Champlain Valley District budget, with opportunities again for questions and comments. We do have in, uh, at the end of each of the uh, rows uh, microphones for you to use. if. We, you can't get to the microphones. There will be a person with a uh, mobile microphone to uh, help you and help us uh, hear you. <clears throat> so it's important for us to hear you, so please do use a microphone. Uh, please, if you are waiting for a, a microphone, please raise your hand. Otherwise, come to the, to the microphones. So we'll start with the article number two. And after I read the the... Uh, what the warning says, I'll need a motion and a second to adopt it. So Article 2 is, shall the voters authorize that current taxes be paid to the town treasurer in three equal installments with due dates of August 15th, November 15th, and February 15th as authorized by 332 VSA Section 4871. Is there a motion to adopt? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Tom Clark got those names. Okay. So, is there any discussion on the the article as read? Sorry. Yes. Do we have any authority to change? Do we possess any authority to change the number of payments from three to four, in light of this potentially staggering tax rate? increase coming this year, mostly from the schools, but still paid to the town. Uh, it's going to be more difficult than ever to budget for this. Do we have potentially that authority? So a motion to amend is in, is, would be in order, yes. I move that we amend to collect taxes on four dates this year, not three. You need to specify the dates. Oh. Right, for the fall, yeah, exactly. August, now showing August 15, November 15, and February 15. Uh, I'm gonna withdraw this because I'm not prepared to suggest dates. I was looking to know if the town could do it, but I plant with all of you the thought that I heard a half an hour ago that the tax rate increase for the schools could run actually as high as 26%, and we need to think about our ability to pay this and how to budget it. Thank you. <clears throat> I would, I would ask that we consider this for future years. The rate is getting very dear. Thank you. Any other comments or questions regarding the, um, article number two? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting article two say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. So we have adopted article two. <clears throat> article three is, Shall the voters of the town of Williston accept the reports of town officials as presented in the town report? You'll find those uh, on pages 39 through 84. Is there a motion to be made? Is there a second? Is there a discussion on the motion? Oh. 
Any questions or, or comments regarding this? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the article number three, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. That leads us to article number four, and that's to transact any, other, any business to be brought before said meeting. Is there any other business that people wish to discuss before we move to adjourn? I see no hands raised. I would uh, accept a motion to adjourn the town meeting. I have a motion made. Is there a second? second. Motion to adjourn is not debatable. So all those in favor of the motion to adjourn say aye. aye. Opposed say nay. As I think a, a famous person said, uh, once upon a time, my job is done here. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. My name's Eric Wells, and I'm your town manager here in Williston. I'll be uh, doing a public information hearing on the other articles, but before we do that, to accompany our town report, I've got a, a brief presentation, just a, a look back at the year that was here. So it's my pleasure to share a look back at the past year. Our annual report covers July 1st to June 30th, uh, 2023. I'll be sharing some updates that occurred also um, leading up to our last town meeting day as we look back at our last year here in Williston. So I'd be remiss if I didn't open with a historic flooding event from last summer. This photo I'm sharing is a drone view taken by our police department looking at the flooded Winooski River from Essex back in early July of last year. We saw some damage from this storm and other storm events in Williston, and we even had to open a temporary shelter here in the Wilson Central School for a time last July. But it was nowhere near the devastation that other communities are, in our state saw and are still dealing with in their recovery. We had another rain event in late July that brought damage to a number of our gravel roads in town in rural Williston. So what we're looking at here is Butternut Road, and thanks to our Department of Public Works for its hard work in getting all roads repaired and reopened. So the before is on the left, and the, the much better after is on the right. So thanks for all the hard work that was done. This was a FEMA-eligible project, too, that the town will be getting reimbursement for in, in the coming months. There's a new town plan being drafted by our planning commission right now. It's planning the future vision of Williston. The select board will start reviewing a transmitted draft letter this year, a, a draft rather, later this year, as a new plan must be adopted by August of 2025. There were community outreach events held with a series of pop-ups and community events last summer and fall. Here are a few images of those uh, community roundtables that occurred. You can visit the website wilson2050.com to continue to stay engaged with this project and share your feedback and, mon and monitor this important project as it moves forward. So it was another busy year for our public works department in addition to dealing with these unpredictable uh, storm events that, that came through. This photo on the screen show the replacement of a culvert on Harvest Lane, our highway department was able to replace. It was a large undertaking by our skilled staff that they were able to do this in-house. And this is our brand new second sidewalk plow we purchased about a year ago using American Rescue Plan Act funds approved by the select board. Um, just over a year ago. We now have the staff and the equipment with the second plow to plow all sidewalks and paths after a snow event in Williston. I know this winter we haven't had a lot of snow to plow, but we'll see what the next few weeks have to bring. Looking at you, Bruce. <laughs> it was an active year for our Wilson Police Department. The department fielded over 7,500 calls for service in calendar year 2023. We also moved our dispatch center to a co-location with the town of Essex Police Department. Wilson and Essex dispatchers now work side by side. This provides the ability for more capacity during high call volume call periods. This stabilized Wilson's operations for dispatch as state police were not able to continue providing free overnight and weekend coverage as they had for many years in Williston. 
We also completed a police services analysis report last fall. This report recommends increasing staffing capacity in the years to come and building out a new outreach unit in our department. The Select Board has tasked me with drafting a five-year implementation plan to deliver to the board for its review later this year. The few photos on the screen are law enforcement engaged in the annual torch run. We have Chief Foley and Officers Miller and Hamlin receiving a community donation. Then a photo of one of our cruisers with some in scenic Williston at one point last year. Our fire department also had an active year. We increased our shift size from four to seven with a minimum staffing of now five personnel with the addition of the nine new career department staff. The department fielded over 2,300 calls for service in calendar year 2023, a 13% increase over the prior year. About 20% of the time, we see overlapping calls for service. The addition of our career staff raises our minimum level on shift. It's been critical in meeting these service needs that are, are forthcoming. Images on the screen I share today are responses by the department with our different apparatus and an image from our annual 9-11 remembrance held at the station. So you may remember last year we kicked off the Wilson Community Spaces project here at town meeting. We launched a survey for feedback on future spaces of the library and looking at a possible community recreation facility. Our project steering committee held interviews with community members and built a community written survey as a result of those interviews that was conducted last spring and summer. Our design architect consultant, Black River Design, has consulted, uh, assisted throughout uh, as we work on this project. The steering committee delivered its recommendation from the report to pursue two possible projects. The first is a renovation and addition to the existing Dorothy Alling Memorial Library. And the second is to explore a possible community recreation center in our growth center in Taft Corners. The next steps for this project will be using ARPA funds for design work for the library project and analyzing possible sites to pursue for the community recreation center project. And work on these projects will be ongoing over the next year. Some news from our library. There are over 45,000 visitors to the library and our bookmobile, Dottie, this past year, up 21% from the year before. Our circulation is nearly 127,000 items, and it ranks fourth among Vermont libraries. Our program attendance was first overall in the state. Because some photos I'm sharing from the Trunk or Treat last Halloween, sponsored by the Rotary Club, a Raptor program on the town green, and our popular Read to a Dog program. It's also a busy year for our recreation department. There are over 2,600 total registrations for programs, and the department has offered over 260 activity options. I'm sharing pictures of our new rec zone space that we opened last year with over 2,000 square feet of space off Harvest Lane. It offers a variety of community active and passive recreation programs. One thing that we're now offering is a table tennis program starting up that I hear has been pretty popular in chatting with our director, Todd. We have a number of donated uh, table tennis tables that are being used as, as part of that uh, program. If you haven't been yet, I encourage you to stop by and engage in a program, or if you have ideas, you have some, you have some talents and skills you wanna help share with our community in our rec zone to contact our recreation department. Looking at our parks, the master plan for the build out of the Allenbrook Park was updated and work is currently underway with an engineer to plan the phasing to create the new park. There's a number of park improvements and replacements also occurred in the past year. Pictured is the disc golf course that had a new sign and warm up area added at our village community park right near here. And we also resurfaced and changed to a basketball court hard surface at, at our Rosignol Park, which is pictured. You may remember this from last year at town meeting. It was approved to use unspent bond proceeds from the construction of the public works facility to purchase solar panels on the roof. We closed on that purchase last October and now own these solar panels. We also have put our new ambulance, Rescue One, in service after it was delivered last June. The town approved the financing of this ambulance with a bond vote last town meeting day. It's been a great addition to our fleet. And we like to share every year um, some staff milestones. I really want to thank our dedicated and hardworking town staff. They're what make it happen every day to deliver town services to Williston. A few milestones I want to recognize this evening. 
completing five years of service in the last year, Police Chief Patrick T. Foley, Senior Firefighter Eric Martins, Senior Firefighter Kyle Tillinghouse, 10 years of service, Assistant Town Clerk Jen Munson, our Circulation Librarian, Christina McSalas, 15 years of service, Planning Director Matt Belanger, and IT and Reference Librarian, Kim Payne, 30 years of service, Police Sir Sergeant Bart Chamberlain, and then completing 36 years of service, and we recognized her retirement last year, was our longtime Assistant Library Director, Debbie Roterer. I also want to thank and recognize our dozens of town volunteers. They're critical to our local government, and they spent hundreds of hours meeting and in service here to Williston. If you'd indulge me with a brief round of applause to recognize the staff and volunteers. <laughs> So finally, that's the past, but I want to talk about the future here. The eclipse is coming up on Monday, April 8th. I can't see any of you because I'm wearing my official eclipse glasses now. These are available in the lobby for everyone, thanks to the state of Vermont. So the total solar eclipse is coming on Monday, April 8th. At 628 in the afternoon, the moon will block out the sun completely for three and a half minutes, and a partial eclipse will occur in the hour leading up to and completely um, after the total eclipse. So this is a big deal. A total solar eclipse last occurred in our corner of the world in the year 1932, and another one won't happen again until the year 2106. So I think this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity that will be occurring here. So this is uh, you know, the technical name of this, the path of totality. So learning more about this the last couple of months, not everyone's gonna be able to see this eclipse. It's gonna follow this path over a certain time period uh, that day. So you can see it's going to come here to our area um, at that 3, 3.26 p.m. So we have, as I mentioned, a number of these glasses. We have them in the lobby. We'll have them at the library, at the town offices, all around. Um, I think that we want uh, everyone to be safe with this. There's directions, a QR code to scan with safety information. Um, and also I want to mention this is likely to draw a lot of people to our region of the world. So in addition to the eclipse glasses that we want to have available for everyone in town who would like a pair, we've been on calls and the state is predicting anywhere between 25,000 and upwards of 200,000 people coming to this area within the path of totality in Vermont to, uh, to view this event. So I, I just want to share, be prepared that day for he and the days leading up to it for heavy traffic in the area. The interstate major routes of travels and parking lots may be jammed up with folks as they, as they come to see the eclipse. Um, our town staff is preparing for emergency services capacity that day, and we'll be hosting an event at the library, and our parks are available for viewing. And given it's a, uh, an outdoors event, the, the weather will likely affect some of the eclipse tourism. Uh, I know last fall, all hotels north of Montpelier have been booked up since last fall for this weekend. So we're expecting a lot of people to come to the region. So just be prepared, be safe, and enjoy and have fun. So this, that's my um, kind of look at the last year and looking ahead here. So I'll, uh, I'll move into our public information hearing. But if there's any questions on anything I just presented, happy to, happy to take them now as well. Okay, so I'll move on to now our public information hearing where we'll look at the remaining articles that will be voted on by Australian ballot tomorrow. The first is Article 5 with the town budget. So in getting started here, a couple budget themes um, that were prevalent throughout this budget development by, the, by myself, the town manager, and the select board. It's working to maintain our current service delivery level employee recruitment and retention, and we're still seeing the effect of inflation. So to start out, what is our town budget? The budget is our spending plan. It includes services to be provided, the cost to provide those services, and revenue to pay for services in order to balance the budget. The budget's the best revenue and spending model with information we have available. And we're working right now to predict what this will look like a year and a half away as this budget goes through the end of June of 2025. 
To deliver municipal services, the town proposes a balanced budget that the voters consider at town meeting each year. This process really starts in August and September as each department head prepares its draft budgets both on an operating and capital level. And then they're submitted to the town manager's office for review, finally culminating with a manager's budget that's transmitted in November. The select board then holds a series of public meetings in December and January to arrive at a final version of the budget that's worn for town meeting. That brings us where we are today. So by the numbers, this is a $15.35 million general fund budget to provide services to Williston. This includes everything from police to fire, EMS, public works, recreation library, town administration, and everything in between. This is about a 9.84 increase from our current general fund budget. The objective in developing the budget was twofold. The term the cost to continue to provide the same level of municipal services that are provided today in each department, inclusive of staffing costs and operating costs, and then identify possible enhancements to add at that point. In the manager's draft budget transmitted last winter, it included a breakout of the cost to maintain the current level of services and possible service enhancements to consider. 8.84% of this proposed increase represents the cost to maintain our current level of services delivered, and 1% of the increase represents service enhancements to the budget. So what's the story behind this budget? This budget focuses on the primary objective of sustaining our municipal services amid the cost pressures we're seeing. 90% of the increase, of the expense increase proposed is maintaining this current service level. Providing services to the community is made possible by our dedicated town staff. We're working to attract and retain staff in the current employment environment, and, and it's, we face a number of challenges over the past couple of years. As many of you are probably aware, there's a 2% unemployment rate in the state of Vermont and about 1.7% unemployment rate in Chittenden County. Municipalities like Wilson are competed for the same limited pool of staff along with the private and nonprofit sectors. For example, it's been very challenging the last couple of years to hire new police officers, a trend we see throughout, the, uh, throughout Vermont and nationally. It can take upwards of 18 months from the date of hire of a, of a new officer to get them trained at our police academy and then on the road on their own. We had four officers leave our department last spring, and we're still down two positions and another just started at the police academy. We're currently facing some similar challenges with the fire department staff as these positions are in high demand among communities for critical fire EMS services. This budget contains cost of living and merit increases for staff. The town has two collective bargaining agreements with unionized personnel in our police and fire departments. The town entered into a memorandum of understanding with the police union in spring 2023 to adjust its wage scale in order to stay competitive in Chittenden County. We're seeing this impact the FY25 budget. For our fire union, contract negotiations are ongoing right now, and in general, the town works to maintain a competitive contract with similar departments. We've seen union contracts throughout sectors being affected by the, the economy in recent years. In general, it's a very expensive endeavor to provide 24-hour 20 police coverage and career fire EMS staffing. And this is a pressure many Vermont communities are now feeling. It's a critical public service that Wilson provides. The expense for these services in the budget is reflected in cost for wages, benefits, training, equipment, among other operational expenses. Two-thirds of this overall budget increase proposed is tied to public safety costs. Another component of our budget is our health insurance costs that we see continuing to rise. The town changed its plan to soften the increase. We moved from the Blue Cross Blue Shield Gold Plan to the Silver Plan at the start of this calendar year. This made our increase in health insurance costs about $120,000 instead of $250,000 if we had stayed with the, current, with the former plan now. The town pays over $1.5 million in employee health insurance costs annually. The town also benefits health insurance on a per-benefits eligible employees basis. In this proposed FY25 budget, that cost is $20,000 per benefits eligible employee. That's up about $1,500 from last year due to the cost, the increased cost in, in health insurance. We're seeing inflation cooling nationally, but it's also affecting professional and contracted services, materials, and supplies. We're seeing professional services and insurance up $115,000 in this budget. This includes things like our assessment from Green Mountain Transit, our dispatch contract with the town of Shelburne for fire, information technology and legal services costs. 
We're also seeing increases to fuel, property insurance, utilities, and supplies. And we see the cost of capital equipment continuing to rise as well, things like police cruisers and dump trucks. So to look at the service enhancements the select board has, um, has included in this budget, and these are two positions starting partway through the year. The first is adding an 18th sworn police officer position, effective January 1st of next year. This would allow the department, uh, the department rather, to fill the, this position by moving an officer into the role. This was the top priority identified in the 2023 police services analysis report by consultant Jim Baker. The addition of a detective capacity will direct staff resources for ongoing investigation services. This budget proposal also adds the Director of Human Resources, effective in October of, next, of this year. This was identified as a top priority as well in audit of our HR systems that we brought in a consultant to look at. This adds an HR professional to support our staff of over 100 employees. And currently our HR duties in town are split between four staff members who each carry other duties as well. The budget cost for these two budget enhancements is about $140,000. So th this graphic shows a breakdown of by different budget object, where our general fund is how it's broken out. So wages and benefits make up the majority of the town's operating expenses. Other areas you can see are capital items, debt service, contracted services, and, and maintenance. Another way to look at it is expenses by department. About 65% of the town's operating budget is to deliver police, fire, EMS, and public work services to the community. And just to highlight an accounting change, we, we've formed a buildings and grounds division within public works in this budget. Before, all expenses for buildings and grounds were broken out into different various departments. This budget now pulls them into a new division in the budget within the public works department. It contributes to what you see as a higher public works department increase overall, but those existing expenses were moved in from other departments. This buildings and grounds division has three full-time employees in the budget. Two exist today. The other position is created by combining an existing part-time position and existing seasonal parks position to arrive at a third position that's overall cost neutral in the budget. So that's the expense side. So next I'll talk about the revenue side, how this budget is balanced. How services are paid for, they come in another of ways for our town revenue. User fees, state and federal grants, host town fees, our local options tax, property taxes, and reserve funds. Then visually, our property tax is just about over half of our revenue, our local option tax about a quarter, then user fees and other revenue make up the rest of, of the overall revenue picture. So looking at impact on property taxes, all other revenue sources are analyzed before seeing what remains to balance the budget with property taxes. An estimated tax rates provided that, uh, that I'll share, but it won't be until the grand list is finalized in the spring that a final tax rate is set by the select board in late June before tax bills are sent out in July. Projected tax rate increase in this budget is just under four cents per $100 of assessed property value. That has a municipal tax rate of about uh, 37.3760 cents, or just over 37 and a half cents per $100 of assessed value. This is about a $40 increase per $100,000 of property value. The median Wilson home is assessed at $300,000. So that would be about $120 increase for the year or about $10 per month looking at the median home benchmark. And this is a reminder, this is the tax rate, rate for the town of Wilson for municipal services. The education tax is separate, but all taxes appear on the same bill as the town's the entity to collect all taxes. Then just a visual here, um, looking at our tax rate compared to our other nearby towns in our county, our local option tax offsets the tax rate by about 19 cents per $100 of value. Wilson remains near the bottom of municipal tax rates in the county right now and with this projected increase. The amount of services the town provides with this tax rate is significant in comparison to our peer communities. Then I'll share a few words on our grand list. The grand list is the measure of all property values in town. It's the basis for determining the tax rate along with the amount of, amount of money to raise by taxes. We're anticipating a flat grand list for next year. 
There's two major factors involved here. Vermont Gas Systems has a depreciation factor not previously applied by its staff to its infrastructure. We're looking at about a $6 million decrease in our grand list value according to our town assessor. It's also possible we see commercial properties appeal their assessments given the current market conditions. As we see in our growth center especially, new growth is occurring in Williston, but given these, given these other factors, the conservative route to take was to project a flat grand list as the new growth may be canceled out by, this, uh, by these other market factors. The effect of a flat grand list is about a quarter cent on the town's tax rate. So I'll, I'll next go over our couple of bond articles, then we'll be able to open up for, for questions here. So we have, there's two bond articles on the warning. The first is a project on our town hall parking lot, Article 6. This is asking for bonded debt capacity up to $700,000 for this project. The select board's also committed up to $200,000 of ARPA funds for this project. The town has also recently applied for a grant assistance to the state downtown transportation fund for $200,000 for this project. This project's scope is to improve the parking lot by adding additional parking, upwards of 40 spaces, to support capacity in our village overall. It will improve the drainage and lighting um, for our staff and for public safety. A number of slips have occurred in the parking lot over the years. It's very dark in the parking lot as well without adequate lighting for anyone who's been there, especially on those dark winter evenings. Um, this, this would also lay electric conduit for electric vehicle charging um, for public stations and for the future electrification of our town fleet vehicles, including our police cruisers. Looking to do this while our parking lot is, is under construction um, would enable us to save it from doing it later. We wouldn't want to have to rip up the parking lot now to then lay the conduit again in the future. A couple of visuals to go along with this article. On the left here kind of shows the limits of the project. You would see it expand in the back here. We see parking around here likely. And we see, you can see in the engineering plans, we have um, lighting throughout here in the parking lot. And then there's a visual from uh, earlier this winter when we had some snow. And it, if you're familiar with the area, we have this heaving that's occurred for years in the middle. This project would fix that. It would help with the water that ponds, pools, and, and freezes right there in the parking lot. So those are, those are the primary reasons to um, for this project being proposed. It's, it's been an item in our capital plan for, for a number of years. Then finally, Article 7 is looking to put a fire suppression system um, installed in the old brick church. This is asking for authority to borrow up to $400,000 for this project. You may recall in the year 2007, a fire nearly destroyed the old brick church after a lightning strike. It wasn't, if it wasn't by the quick action of our Wilson Fire Department, we may have lost the building that day. And since then, the longtime goal has been to install a fire suppression system, a sprinkler system to the building. This project inclu would include a new water line that would need to be go to the building and the technical work to install a system in a historic building. Then the visual back to 2007, this was the cover of the Observer back on June 2nd, photo by uh, Pogo Sr. Um, showing our department um, putting out the fire and, and saving the building after that lightning strike. We've had discussion pick up about using this building more as we move out of the pandemic, and this has been a step, a long, a step discussed for a long time and in our capital plan to put this system within that building. Finally, it's our schedule for town meeting. You're here tonight, um, Monday, March 4th, for the town meeting and public information hearing. The polls will be open tomorrow for voting by Australian ballot from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Armory. Remember to vote. That's our town comfort dog, Duke, reminding everybody. <laughs> a photo a couple years ago. And I will now open it up for any questions on, on any of this information. And if you, if you wouldn't mind coming to speak to one of the microphones here, or we can also bring a microphone to you if, if that would be easier. On the parking lot bond. Oh, might need to just turn the microphone on, I think. I've used microphone, so. <laughs> Can you hear me? There we go. All right. Thank you. So on the parking lot deal, that's $700,000 for 6,400 square feet. That works out to over $100 a square foot. 
typical prices for an asphalt parking lot are $20 a square foot. Other than paying for a stormwater permit, what's causing this $80 variation? Sure, nope. appreciate the question. And just to clarify, the project, his cost is estimated at $900,000. Um, we would have, we have 200,000 allocated and the other 700, it would be the bonding authority. Or more like $140 a square foot? Yeah, what, what we're seeing driving the price and throughout cons the construction industry right now um, is, is escalating costs, but the, um, the electrical conduit component of this project is, is really driving up the cost as well and looking to include that as part of the scope. Oops. These are, it, it's a, a reality right now of, of the of construction costs. It is a reality because it's $20 per square foot. This is like California prices. No, we, we, we have the engineer's estimate on the project. We'd be happy to share the plans and more details with you if you'd like. Yeah, they, it, it, this would be charged, this would be, the conduit would be used to charge electric vehicles, um, ultimately. I, I can say it's our engineer's estimate, we'd be happy to look at it in further detail with you. Yep, Chair. With a project like this, would you um, be putting it out for a bid so people would bid on the project? Yep, yep, it would be competitively bid. Oh. Other questions from folks? Hi, Tim Cope, thank you for the presentation. Sure. Uh, a few questions. One, <clears throat> given what we're experiencing with the school budget as well, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any areas that you can see that can be deferred a year or anything else that could be decreased even to save a half a percent or a percent? I realize the majority of the increase is in salaries and benefits. Uh, some of those are also from additional uh, staff. So that's my first question. <clears throat> sure. No, certainly this is something the select board took a, took a hard look at throughout the budget deliberations process. Um, these positions are also budgeted to start midway through the year. That, that was the way um, the board felt they were important to include, but not to include for the full year to help look at those costs that we're experiencing as well. So that builds in an increase for next year automatically as well because yep. of those, the second half of that. There would be proportional costs there, about a third of, a um, fourth of the year for the HR director and, and okay. about uh, another half year for the detective position. Thank you. Uh, second is, I don't know what control you have as a town or impact you have, but in terms of the number of empty commercial spaces, is that uh, anything that you can impact as a town? Because that would then increase our revenue, correct? Our tax revenue? Yeah, it, it would tie back to um, if there's a question of an appeal for the assessment for some of these vacant commercial spaces. I, I do know I, I check in with um, property managers and, and real estate folks for those vacant spaces. I anticipate, I, I know there's been interest in them. Um, it's typically not something the town's taken an active role in, but we certainly would if it was vacant for, for a longer stretch of time, look to see what we may be able to do to help. Thank you, and most important, what are you doing to get sunshine on April 8th? <laughs> Doing the best I can. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Chris Gaffigan, and I'm very supportive of the police department, the fire department, but I'm trying to figure out why we're spending money on EV charging stations. Do we have police cruisers now that have EV charging? They need it. Sure. No, good question. Yeah. The, the town is, is going to be moving there in future years. We don't currently have electric vehicles in our fleet. We are building a plan to add them as the technology supports it. So in looking to address this parking lot project, um, or also the town's energy plan um, has these goals in it as well to look to electrify our fleet, um, to look to reduce carbon emissions. So we see an opportunity now as we need to improve our parking lot due to these uh, drainage issues and lighting issues that we could also look to kind of future proof it to have this put in for this longer term town goal that we'll be pursuing in years so to come. So are those charging stations just for public safety or is it for anyone who wants to use it? 
Yep. The, the intent would be to have public available charging stations in the town hall parking lot. So we would end up paying for people charging their cars? They would, it would be putting the infrastructure in, but people would have to spend um, their own money for the charging there. Okay. We, we, and then the cost of uh, an electric cruiser for future, still expensive? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't have a good number on that right now. I, I know in consulting with our police department, we're, we're monitoring the technology nationally. You know, we, certainly we want to move that direction, but we want to make sure operationally it's the right time to do it. Do um, we know they'll work in Vermont with climate, and you know, cold weather? Those are Everything all things we want to make EV sure before we move ahead. It's horrible in the winter. <laughs> and, you know, if uh, one of our cruisers has to block somebody and gets hit, catches fire, pretty hard to put it out. Yep. More Those, cost for our fire department. Those are all things we'll be looking at closely before we make that move. Okay. Another question on uh, the HR director. So you said we have four people who are doing it now. Why do we need, how much did you pay the consultant to tell us that you needed an HR director? <laughs> Yep. This, this report looked at a number of our factors here and how we do our HR systems. Um, we thought it was a good opportunity. We never really had someone look under the hood about what our capacity looked like and what we we're able to do today. Um, you know, how do we it, handle it now? Who are the four people? Are they like coordinators of HR? Are they department-wide? Is it? Yep. They all, they all work in our central administration. Our, currently, our director of finance also holds the HR director title. That's, that's likely a one-and-a-half person job. There, there's a lot, of, a lot to carry with that role. And we yep. also have uh, myself and staff in the manager's office and staff in the finance office. So it, it's spread in a lot of many different places. We look at our, our peer municipalities, have someone who's uh, professional trained in this role to support the workforce that we have. Um, that's what we land on you, that recommendation. Do you anticipate that growing? So you have four people who are doing it now, you get the director, you anticipate further growth? Well, just to clarify, the intent would be to remove that responsibility from the four people where it's spread out to, because they all have other primary tasks to look at. And with the nature of HR, it's something where you need to drop everything and, and, and work to support the employee or, or work through the issue when it occurs. So by adding this position, it professionalizes it, it brings that support and development for all our staff, and it also builds more capacity with our town administration who's um, working through those right now. Yeah. So do you assist with that currently, like you're part of the HR team? Yep, I am. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Question about the um, additional police staff. Do we? How do we anticipate that that would help the retail theft issue that we have in Williston? Sure, good question. So, in, in looking at this, and um, Kurt, if you haven't had the opportunity to read uh, Jim Baker's report, it looks at this future vision and looking at our co-production of public safety as part of it. So looking at um, retail theft, which we've experienced quite a bit in town in, in recent years, we currently, when our police officers take a call for retail theft, the officer that responds to that call is responsible for working the case through. We have officers who work typically 12-hour shifts, three or four days in a row. They may pick up a number of retail theft infractions while they're on shift. They're off for a number of days as well. By having a detective position, it allows us to look at investigations on a whole, to keep these cases moving, to look at trends and connections, to ultimately find ways to resolve these um, most efficiently. So does that mean that we're going to see more, um, oh, what do you call it, like people get arrested for these things and not just, and not just kind of hand slapped? I mean, do we anticipate that that will help reduce or eliminate some of this? Retail theft we're gonna we keep experiencing. Sure. So I think there's a lot of um, a lot of members of the team there to look at that. You know, we have our law enforcement. We also work with our community justice center as part of our uh, police department. Um, we're building the capacity where we may be able to send folks through that process sooner as well. We're thinking about as part of this vision to have um, a greater police presence in our growth center by having a. Um, a facility renting some space in Maple Tree Place. So I, I think it, it's coordinated. It's, it's looking to have our law enforcement involved in getting people to restorative justice as well quicker. Um, that's a, a proven method that, that works for folks and to help get them into that, into that program that the town runs is, is part, of, part of the overall picture here as well. Yes? So a 
A quick uh, clarification on the scope of Article 6. Uh, this describes an expansion of 6,400 square feet, but as I understand it, you're also talking about addressing the entire parking lot. Yes, that's as correct. Well. Yep. So when we talk about the cost per square foot of doing this type of work, it's not against the 6,400, it's against the entire lot. Is that correct? Yeah, where our, 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 let me get back to my picture. Yeah, it's looking to cover things within that scope area that encompass all those elements. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm, hi there. Hi, Eric. Can you tell us what's happened to the funds for the Environmental Reserve Fund and the Affordable Housing Trust? Sure. Yeah, starting the Affordable Housing Trust, um, the town has seeded that for a number of years, and um, we've currently, the select board created a affordable housing committee uh, at the end of last year. There's now been folks appointed to that committee, and I know um, what they're working on in their initial year is to propose uses for the Affordable Housing Trust. We also have um, some new zoning bylaws that were enacted that are going to build that, tr that uh, affordable housing trust fund with other streams of revenue. We had small seed amounts in the budget through the years initially. Um, having some things in the last couple of years of looking at um, different components of the budget, we, we didn't have funding there. It's certainly something the town will be, I anticipate, looking at to its housing committee for guidance moving forward as we look at different revenue streams, and ultimately how that fund is going to be utilized um, for affordable housing in town. About the environmental, I mean, the what was it? Environmental Reserve Fund? Yeah. yeah. Yep. There as well, there's about over half a million dollars currently in that reserve fund. You know, certainly we see um, using that to leverage uh, different opportunities um, to purchase and uh, conserve property in Williston. As we know, the real estate prices are increasing. Um, we've been able to work with uh, partners and grant funding to help us buy major parcels over the year. Um, then everything considered with the budget, um, it was a good discussion by the select board. Um, in the first initial proposal, trying to balance the budget, that number was a little bit lower. The board um, heard good feedback from the community and increased that allocation as well in, in the budget. It's certainly something that we have to look at moving forward as well and thinking about what's the, the right size for, for that fund moving forward. Yeah, it seems like with the, with the greater development, the loss of land, we should be increasing that that budget amount, but it's been decreasing over the last few years. It's all, all part of the many pieces to balance the budget, I know, and there's, you know, seeing the pressures of our expense increase this year and trying to weigh all these different um, important town goals in the budget. And a, a lot, the select board before you had to look and make a lot of those tough decisions of putting this budget together. Hello, my name is Dan Boomhauer. Um, I'm, I'm trying to follow the, what we're saying here. And it sounds to me like you're adding staff, a million dollars worth of a bond. Um, there's a, in addition to the fact there's gonna be a huge increase in education. There's a change in um, uh, resources and the police in terms of $180,000 plus. And so my question is, if this budget gets voted down, what will be your next step? So process-wise, if this budget was not supported by the community, um, I would turn to the select board, and the select board would have a discussion looking at um, working through that proposal. I anticipate hearing feedback from the community and um, moving forward at that point. There would have to be a, a new budget that was put forth uh, in, the, in the coming months. What would be the timeline for that? Um, Without discussing with the board, I, you know, I would anticipate something, discussions would occur in March and April, and we'd look at a timeline, ultimately have a budget considered again before the turn of the fiscal year, July 1st. Great, thank you. My second question is regarding the Environmental Conservation Fund, which in past history was funded um, by the taxpayers on a regular basis. And from what I just heard you say, I'm not really clear how it would be funded in the future. So my question is, how much money or how many dollars per $100,000 of our taxes goes towards the Environmental Conservation Fund in the future budget, budget for 2025? 
on a per dollar basis, I, I'd have to run that calculation a little more, but I, I know we have about, we have $40,000 allocated in the budget towards that fund. There's a fund balance of about $550,000 right now. I realize what the, what's in it. I'm just wondering what will be put into it in addition. So thank you for that. Yep, thank you. Uh, other questions? Yep, Brent. My name is uh, Brant Thinken, and uh, I have an ongoing uh, concern. I'm part of the uh, r uh, racial justice and, and the uh, community uh, justice uh, group. Uh, and um, I uh, have a concern about uh, the need for, for more uh, social workers uh, in the, uh, the Williston area. Um, there's a, a critical uh, shortage of that service. And, uh, you know, I know that there's constraints on, on uh, our, our, our budget, uh, but uh, this kind of thing will actually uh, uh, in the, save the, the, the town money, you know, if we get the adequate uh, social workers and we'll put the stress, uh, help alleviate some of the stress in the police department, uh, you know, in their job uh, description. Certainly. Um, part of Jim Baker's police analysis report was looking on those exact points, Brant. We currently work with the Howard Center Mental Health Services, Wilson, and eight other communities work to share um, four social workers from the Howard Center who assist our police officers on going to calls and, and, and working to provide those services. It's been a great partnership and program. Um, moving forward, there there is thinking about the town having its own staff level um, in house. That's something that's included in the report to think about in, in the years to come. Good evening. My name is Roberta Tracy, and I live here in town. And my husband and I recently moved here from Montpelier. And the reason we left Montpelier was because the tax burden had become so onerous, we could no longer afford to live there. So we moved here. We were public servants. We were not lawyers. We were not professionals. And we served our communities. And so needless to say, I appreciate the thoughtfulness with which you have put together your presentation tonight. But I have to say my concerns are that we are once again finding ourselves in a position where we are asking people to dig down deeper than they can really afford to. And what in this budget is absolutely essential. And I'm not a math whiz, but I know numbers and sticker shock when it's put in front of me. And my, con my question to you is, where are we supposed to come up with the money? Thank you. Um, certainly, thank you for your comments. And I, I know it is a, it's a very challenging year. I know certainly no one wants to hear that taxes are going to go up in any year. 3% or more. They're not just going up. They are skyrocketing. I know it's a, it's a very challenging year uh, moving ahead here. I, you know, I, I certainly under, understand, and thank you, for your, thank you for your comments. Uh, Dave Edwards, uh, Eric, just three easy questions. Uh, number one, with that parking lot issue, uh, if you do put lights eventually in the parking lot, will those solar panels take care of all the electrical needs? Oh, good question. Yeah, th those are baked into net metering credits um, throughout the town's operating budget. We also have the trackers behind Town Hall. Um, so it all kind of feeds into uh, credits on our electric bill overall. I'd, we'd have to run the numbers a, a little bit more just to see what the, the load use was on different meters around. But um, So there could be eventually an additional electrical cost for those uh, chargers in the, and, and chargers in the lights in the parking the, lot. Could be. The, the lights will use electricity. Um, I know we'll be looking at efficient lighting um, options there. Also, for folks who, if we have a public charging station, we're gonna um, 
it's a, ultimately a policy question for the select board that doesn't haven't worked through yet. But you know, the question of what the town charges for that electricity, um, there's certain rules and tariffs for electricity um, as well. We're looking uh, to install one in the park. That's what I am yep. interested in. Uh, secondly, that uh, human resources position is budgeted at about $90,000 salary and benefits. But if I understood you correctly, it doesn't start until October? Correct. So we budgeted a, a year's salary, or is it just a really well-paid position? It, <laughs> it, it's a prorated position on the year. Um, you know, it also prorates the benefits costs for the employee. Um, and that the, what we've budgeted for that position is based on a market analysis and work with our consultant but, for that but level. The, but the budget says $90,000. Um, 60, 60 and 30 uh, for uh, salary and benefits. Oh, you're saying ninety thousand dollars salary? Salary and benefits together is ninety thousand dollars, but the job doesn't start until October. Correct. Yep. So, oh, so that ninety thousand is a is an annual salary and benefits, or is it a three month salary and benefits? It it would be a, a nine month picture. So that we're starting at one third into the fiscal year, so that would cover three quarters of it. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. And then finally, if I'm reading the the other things correctly. We're carrying about $6 million in debt plus $2 million in utility debt on a $15 million budget, and we want to add another million dollars of debt. It, it seems like a lot of debt for a, you know 50% of the budget. Uh, it, it, am I reading that correctly? And, I have to pull up. I can sit with you and look at these a little closer. But overall, our, our general fund operating budget, and this is separate from our utilities, as those are all enterprise yeah. funds, our, the amount we pay for our debt service, I think, is around 7% of our overall operating budget costs. Per year? Per year. Yeah, but we're still carrying $8 million over a period of years on yeah, a town that's got a $15 million budget. It, it just struck me as being a, a, a lot of debt that, that we're committed to over the years. And, and I don't know what normal should be in a case like that. Keep an eye on it. Sure. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I'll reveal that I am an HR consultant. Okay. <laughs> and I have worked with multiple towns in the state. I'm standing in support of us hiring an HR professional. And I want to just. Um, give some wisdom on this choice. Our professional association says that we should have one full-time HR person for every 75 to 80 employees. So you're, you could even use more. But the reason why this is so critical is our most important and expensive asset in the entire town and in any company are its people. And we need a dedicated HR person to support and protect that asset if we're going to put all this money, the majority of the budget is to support our people. So that's why we need that position. So I know it's common practice for people to say, let's cut HR just the way when we want to cut a school budget, we say, let's cut arts. But it's vital. Both are vital. And we need to look at that. Having said that, we need to figure out how to rein this budget in a little bit. <laughs> it's just, it's too much but not HR. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any, any other questions? Yep, come down. Are we going to take a break before the school portion of this? Yep. <laughs> I know that traditionally quite a few people have to leave at that point, myself being one of them. And I would like to make a matter of privilege, a very brief comment on the relationship of the school budget to our overall town budget. And I'm hoping that you will vote, my fellow citizens, the school budget down this year, not because you're necessarily opposed to the amount of spending it would incur, but because the school board itself admitted, not about over an hour and a half ago, that they don't even know what that funding stream is going to be based on anymore. They designed the budget based on Act 127, the former act, which had the famous 5% cap. But about two and a half weeks ago, the legislature repealed that and substituted a flow chart system, which would, in fact, apparently, allow us to make adjustments that actually might mean something. If we say that we support that budget as it stands now, but yeah, maybe the board will change it later, but we'll, we'll vote for it. What we're saying to the legislature is we have, in fact, no problem 
with the amount of money you're proposing to spend because, hell, we just passed it. So don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Brattleboro will take it just fine. And this comes back on the town. We're all sitting here picking at the town over what I think are important and needed positions. And at the same time, the school is proposing an increase, which they also admitted about an hour and a half ago, will be no less than about 18.4% and could run as high as 264 or more. And they won't know for a long time. But in fact, the legislature has authorized them to pause that vote and rethink it. And that's what we must get them to do. And that means the school portion of this must be defeated. And I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Additional questions on the town budget? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Joyce Austin. And on page 22 of the town municipal tax history, it seems like the tax rate from 2016 to 2022 was pretty flat. I, I know inflation and all that because we're living with it. Um, in our homes and when we shop. But it seems like quite a s increase from 2022 to 2025. I, I just like to, I know you can't really address anything, but I just like people to notice that that's quite an increase. Um, I have, we've been here for a while and I've always appreciated the flatness of that graph. Um, in, in earlier times. And maybe it's just the sign of the times that it's going to be increasing. And I'm afraid that if it increases much more after this, that people will have to move away. Um, that's what I'd like to say. But I'd also like to ask if there's a charging station at the new park and ride, right? The, the state park and ride. Um, oh, that's a state, so that's different than... Yep, it's a, a state of Vermont facility. I'm, we can't use it? Um, anyone can use it for, for park and ride. I, I, you know, I don't think they have a charging station there right now. How I'm, about I'm, in I'm, the police station? The state? The state police station? I, I am not positive, but I don't anticipate it would be public available, but it would, we'd have to check with the state on that. Um, and I also wonder why we're all here in Vermont, we never had like an open house at the state police department to just see what's there. Sure. I, Anybody interested? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure reaching out to the state of Vermont and, and seeing, they I know they- would take us? Um, <laughs> if we went, you know, I, not put us in jail, but- No, <laughs> I, I'd, uh, I'd reach out to them as a, as a state taxpayer and, and see if you're able to get a tour of that facility. Oh, okay. Is there a person I can call? Um, I, I wish I knew. I'd love to see what... <laughs> oh, um, Representative Arsenault may know. She's on the uh, <laughs> Judicial Committee. <laughs> I would love to do that. I, I, there are these parking lots, you know, garages, and now they're saying there's no room for their facilities from the old State Department in that one. And it looks like there's plenty of space, but I'd just like to see it. And your name? Angela. Thank you. I'll connect with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any any final questions here? All right. Well, well, thank you everyone for your attention. Oh, sorry. One more in the back. Come on down. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sherry Arnold, and I just want to let everybody know that I have grown up here in Vermont. I grew up here in Williston. I love it. I would love to see my children stay here. They're not. I would like to be more affordable. And this is not, I don't have a question for the school budget, and I don't have a question for the town. What I wanted to say is that with all the fiasco, we just want to have to be reminded, with all the fiasco that happened at Jay Peak with the fraudulent lawsuit, Governor Scott and his team will be starting to pay this summer our first installment. And we didn't commit the crime, but we have to pay the bill. So it's uh, 16.5 million we have to pay over 
three years, and that'll be 9.5 million starting this summer, the first bill. So we have to take that into consideration when we're digging deep into our pockets. I also want to say that I'm a blue collar worker. I don't have a college degree, and I'm sure some of them, some people here don't either. So it's kind of tight for some of us when we're trying to save for retirement. We've helped put our kids through college, and we're struggling. And now some of us who are trying to make decisions of whether we leave or we stay in our homes, seniors having to be forced out. I talked to a real estate agent recently, and she said, all you baby boomers need to go. And I'm like, we love our homes. That's not a solution. We'd, I'd rather not be pushed out or have other family members, my mother and my in-laws, be pushed out because um, it's just getting to be too expensive. And I'd really like to have other solutions that we could put our heads together and come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Any final questions? All right, we will wrap up the town portion there. Reminder, the polls are open from 7 to 7 tomorrow. If you have a question you think of after leaving tonight, give me an email or a call. I'll be around in the office tomorrow. Happy to make sure your question is answered before, before you vote. I think we'll take a, a brief uh, recess here to let the school district folks get set up, and then we'll turn it over to them. Thank you all. Yeah.